Right, hello everybody. It's Monday and it's time to do some level design. Um, what we're going to do is continue with time to go to the shops, which is just the code name I've given this level here. And if you guys want to check it out, you can just click on that link and it will take you straight through uh, to a playable version. And you'll be able to see this and what's going on. And if we just uh, take like a little brief overview, I have done quite a bit of work since the last stream anybody saw, uh, just really uh, fleshing out the gray boxing of the level. Uh, in the background there, you can see there's uh, the temple is starting to take shape, albeit not particularly interesting at this stage. Um, the other things I did was fix up some of the actual uh, stuff that controls. Yeah, I can bump into that. Uh, yeah, fix up a bunch of the code that controls some of the narrative tasks. Uh, and then I built a bunch of plants like these guys down here and uh, these bushes and these palm trees. Uh, I modeled them and there's time lapses which are on YouTube. Which I guess I can link as well of me just doing that. Ha! <laughs> YouTube recommendations. Uh, so there's this playlist as well. Uh, which basically has uh, building uh, some jungle plants uh, and also then blocking out the temple and doing some of the decorating which you can see just now. They're Quite fun to have a quick watch. But basically, I had modeled a terrible <laughs> uh, palm tree, uh, uh, what do you call it? Palm tree trunk, and it just wasn't very nice. And I went and redid it and did a couple of variations as well. Uh, the palm frond actually stayed the same, but I changed uh, what it looks like. If we carry on running through. Uh, we have the same path, and then I was also uh, in the midst of decorating uh, this area around this disagreeable bird. And you can actually say hi to the disagreeable bird now, and he wants ice cream. So uh, like I added a whole bunch more detail in here, probably too much for uh, the game engine to handle just now. There's a lot of objects just everywhere in this level but I'm trying to basically get to like a specific trying to get to like a good level of visual quality uh, and then I can dial it back and make things more straightforward as we go and so this is going to be the little town area uh, where there'll be some characters to talk to and then here will be our prison although I don't think I'm going to use this building I think I'm going to have to have to model I might take some of it uh, I think having something a bit more fitting to like the theme of being in a jungle would be nice uh, but we'll see maybe I can get Voxelius to make me something hey hey hi pixel how are things anyway uh, I'm gonna have to go into the old game editor to get up here and show off the rest of this sort of stuff Close your eyes, secrets. <laughs> Here we go. Or we would if I pressed enter. Yeah, so I've basically done like an incredible amount. An incredible amount. He said that's very self aggrandizing. Um, but if we zoom out, so it was. You can see that there's a whole bunch more up here uh, around this temple. And if I grab me, I'll just pause things so I don't fall. And go over and take a look. Uh, you're going to fall in the level. Excellent. Yeah, so up here, there's just a bunch of platforms floating in the air. And there's this area out here which I made last time. And you can see that once you get up here, you can like look down on the world and 
all of this sort of stuff and I'm going to think today start like pulling this detail into uh, other areas as well just to get some idea of like you know how busy that's going to be and I also need to think about like these guys because uh, they're a very different color to the gra to the other rock that we have but maybe that's okay um, and then yeah thinking about buildings and also what this particular area should look like so what I did uh, on Friday last week well I started this actually before that but on Friday last week, I went through and just laid out a bunch of kind of like jumping puzzles and it's not supposed to be difficult to get through. It's just supposed to be, you know, give you the feeling of having a more kind of like gamey stuff going on, not just uh, chatting to people. So this is the player's going to come through here and you can see that, like, you know, it's not challenging for me to get through. I doubt it'd be challenging for many people. Um, and it just gives you like a nice route through uh, to get down here. And this uh, spot down here is essentially, uh, this needs a lot more fleshing out and thinking about, but uh, there's gonna be a skeleton guarding the crystal skull and he'll give it to you if you help him out. Um, and there just should be a bunch of other stuff going on in here. Like this is fairly big, so maybe I will uh, collapse this down and put some other kinds of uh, traps and things in here. Maybe have like a, because right now this is just open, but if I put a roof across here, then, uh, then we could uh, have this as like a, an underground area. Uh, that you run through and then this temple can actually be on the, the level above and you can go up some steps to get there. Uh, so what I'm making, this is going to be like a narrative game. Um, let me just stop and start again. And so what I've been doing is like adding in uh, code to make ob objects and items uh, do different things. So you saw it said my new tail came up over my head and I can just show you, I'll just show you that. It's kind of fun. Um, so we have this thing called a tail director. And this is essentially just going through and uh, holds all of the state for the story. And what other objects in the world can do is interact with that state. So they kind of like, you know, players interacted with me. I need to find his tail director and ask it questions about what's going on with the world. Um, and in this case, like when you start, it says whatever the name of the story is above your head, which is all very well. But then we have other objects like this box here, and this box has a tail snippet on it. And this is just uh, its name that will show up above it, so you can see that it's interactable. And then just some text. So each one of these gets shown for each time uh, the use button is pushed on them. Uh, and then they can also set up some like conditions and this would check in the tail director if boop is defined and equals uh, zero then it will play text two and text two is about how my life uh, and that's basically the idea and then there's another component that just like text types as if somebody was typing the text out um, just to make it look a little cooler and that just sort of manifests itself like this. So I can see the test crate and I can wander up to it. And I say, this is a story. Got flipped, turned upside down. Fresh Prince reference, if anybody is old enough to remember that. And you can see it just adds the dot, dot, dot on there, which says that there's more stuff to come and it goes in a loop. So you can go in a loop and you can turn bits of text on and off. And that means uh, you can change what these things say. Uh, there's also the concept of items. So this little guy down here is cocoa milk, which is chocolate milk in Icelandic. And one of the brand names of chocolate milk. And if I press enter here, it says cocoa milk, delicious when provided for free. And uh, that's coming out of the character. So like the characters saying it. Yeah, it's missing all about how, but all about how is actually on there. 
Like if you look in here, and I spelt it, I think, <laughs> this is a story about how, yeah, all about how. Let's just change that. So I'm not embarrassingly wrong. And so what I was doing when I was writing this is I just like, you know, this is the first thing that popped in my head when I started thinking of like, what can I put in here? Which is why I get like, got things wrong and then just ran out of what the next line was. And the reason why all about how my life doesn't come out, if you see, go through, this is a story, and then it just goes, got flipped, turned upside down. And that's because this condition is set right now. So if I delete this out and uh, save it, then the next time when I get through it all, it says, this is a story. Ha, <laughs> it does not remember it. Okay, I know why. I just need to stop and start again. So there's some stuff here where I save state out, uh, not in the properties. And so it just needs a restart to take effect. And so now you can see uh, it comes through properly. And there's other stuff in there as well. So I could pick up this item. Um, this is very far out. You can pick up this item. And when you pick up an item, it'll actually set coca milk to be uh, true. And so I can go in and edit this guy and say, like, for example, it'll only say whoop. Whoops, if I type the right thing. It'll only say coca milk. It'll only say this uh, now if coca milk is true. And we have to stop and start again and run back up there. And so, so this is a story all about got flipped, something, 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 and then it won't say whoop. And I think there's a bug there as well because it shouldn't have shown the dot, 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 and all of this sort of thing, so I can not pick up the coke milk. Why won't you give me the coke milk? Oh, man. Uh, let's see Do if I just run away. So there's still bugs. I mean, I haven't really started fleshing out the actual uh, gameplay. Why won't you get picked up now? Well, that's frustrating. Uh, yeah, so we can pick it up, but we can't pick it up at all. That's like very strange. That worked two seconds ago. And I haven't changed it at all. Oh well, I will just stop, <laughs> stop showing the broken bits. And then the other thing we've got is like triggers. So uh, uh, if we go and look at this box, and uh, not bring up Windows. Uh, so on here is like on trigger self say, and I actually want to put it on here. So you can add that in. And it says core. And I want it to be on invisible volumes as well, but that doesn't work. We need to fix some stuff to make that actually happen. And if I just take it off this crate, because it makes no sense on it, it's just a crate. Uh, so then what happens is when you run onto here, it says core. And that's just so you know you can have flavor text as you're running around and all of that sort of stuff going on. Um, and then you know there's other things I've started putting like this bird is the first actual element like the bird I just stole from uh, the resources. I think it comes from another game, and he just works as the, the same way as the the box. He just says what to tell him to and all of that sort of stuff. Um, so when we get a little bit further in, in this kind of like decorating and building out the world, 
Um, I'll start adding some more story elements in. Um, and that way you'll be able to do stuff. You can see like he runs across here and say core now whenever he runs across it, which is kind of wrong. We only want that to happen once. So that's like another element to add in. Can I pick up the cocoa milk yet? No. Honestly, why, why are you not being picked up? Kind of annoying. Feels like it's related to me suddenly adding it in it up here for some reason. If I delete this out, uh, don't press Control S. No, it still doesn't let me pick them up. Somehow, in fiddling about with it and showing it, I broke it. But oh well, I will fix that off stream a little bit later. Uh, what I want to do now is just finish off this area over here. Because it's like the first kind of part of the game that's kind of approaching the sort of visual fidelity that would be nice to have. Like if you look at a lot of the dot big bang uh, levels for other things, they're simpler. And it's kind of hard, I think, or at least hard for me, whoops, to make something super straightforward. I like my palm trees detail. Well, let's just do one of these from scratch, actually. So we'll just take this and we'll make a new one. We'll slap it over here. We can get it approximately in the right spot. And then we can copy it again and we can paste it in again and just rotate it around. And you know, down a bit. That is definitely not in the right spot. And then we can copy that again and paste it again and uh, rotate it around some more. Interesting. This, yeah, so it wants to be in the local space. And copy and paste it. Go back to world. And just cutting between these two so that it gives us like. Uh, more control, like local does all of the adjustments uh, as if it was like this is pointing along the Z axis, the blue axis. And so doing this just lets us rotate it within the space that it's sitting in, uh, which means we can do it directly in uh, like do things like pitch it up and down without it going crazy. And the world is just like the world uh, we're in right now, so you can see it's kind of aligned uh, this way and this way, and then the green one uh, rotates around the middle. So if we keep pasting these in, that's cool. If we manage to wiggle it a bit in a way I don't like. So we're going to copy this guy across. And we can start copying and pasting him in. And you can actually go like quite a long way just by building palm trees like this and uh, this way and then we'll just start uh, putting bits and pieces that are going to go up and so so here if I rotated around your it would go down on the other side um, which is not what I want what I want is to do this in the world space. And then it goes around like this. Um, but then I want to go back to local to push it down. And then I'm going to scale it as well. So I'm going to make it shorter and thinner. And I'm going to do that with some of these as well. Just give them a little bit more to differentiate them from other bits and pieces 
And then if we go back to our character, we've got a, another palm tree. And it looks different to the first palm tree. Firstly, because it's got a leaning trunk. Secondly, because it's got a slightly different arrangement of stuff on top of it. And now it doesn't really matter too much that there's... Uh, People probably won't notice that there's repetition in these sort of, this sort of stuff, um, but sometimes it's nice just to like have things that make sure you can definitely see that they're not the same. Uh, so what I'm going to do is copy and paste this one across onto the others, and then tweak it a bit in order to make it look uh, better. Oh um, yeah, to to just kind of like keep these things going around. Um, what else was I going to do? There was something just a second ago I had thought of, but now it's gone. It'll come back. So one of the nice things is that you can just grab... That's interesting, we need two inside of each other here. You can just grab all of these, whoops. And then copy and paste. And we want to be just... Make sure we're in the world. Whoops. That is not what I wanted to do at all. Uh, then we can move them about. And say, for example, and so you can see here another thing I've done, which is to change the scale of, uh, of the trees somewhat. So if I go all the way up here, you can now see like this one's got one on. And it's identical to that, and you can kind of see that that's the case. But one of the first things we can do is just to rotate it round like this. And then if we just locally start, whoa, that's way oversensitive. Uh, start poking some of these about. Interesting. You can also find that one that was sitting on top of one another one. And swing it around. And already it looks quite different to this one now. Uh, and then we'll just carry on doing that. So one thing that would be nice is to be able to turn this whole set of things into a group and then have that group be something that's selectable with one click rather than doing what I'm doing which is painfully making sure I have everything selected so that's on my list for cool new additions to dot big bang uh, let's do here next and then after we've gone through, so just for this one, I'm going to swing this around. I think I managed to miss a couple of, uh, couple of things. So, so you can see like that's just that one copied and rotated, but you can't really tell that from, from just looking. Now if I... Ah, that was far too much selected in one go. I do wonder if I had something else selected. There'll be some random thing parked out in the middle of nowhere now. Okay. Actually not very well placed in the first place. Uh, we'll copy another one. Take it over here. Like if you've got any questions, just not like it doesn't have to be relating to what I'm doing. You can just chat whilst I uh, lay these things out. Anything at all related to like game development or dot big bang or life. It's all good. This one would be kind of droopy, I guess. That's what I'm feeling right now.
amazing. Uh, let's not spin that like that. Yeah, that's what I did. There's this like random thing floating in the air up here. La la la. Right. Guess it might be a good idea for this sort of stuff to find some music to put on in the background at the same time. Because there's not so much you can narrate over the top of clicking and copying and pasting stuff. Um, there we go. And this will be interesting because this has got two. Ha, huh, my aim is terrible. So, one of the other things I've been doing in the past is like virtual reality work, building a tool for architects. And this sort of issue just doesn't happen because you know where, because you, you have proper like depth perception. And also you can move your head very easily to see where everything should go, which is what the problem I'm having just now is, is that this is hard to line up, particularly as you can't see where the where this bit is. That's better. I sort of just bosh it on top. And these can be all intersecting and horrible. Apart from you, you're not allowed to intersect a tree trunk because that just looks bad. Um, and the other thing I should have done when I had the chance was to grab it all. So one of the other things I want to do is make this uh, bring this over here. Yeah, just to give this a bit of a tilt in comparison. It's a bit of a funny angle. And the reason for doing that is just so that it kind of like frames things like this. You can kind of see that it's, you, know, you get a bit more of a cover. And there's just one more of these to do and we're done with that little bit of detail. And you can kind of see, if you look over this way, empty, dead. You look over this way, <gasps> jungle. So it's getting there. And this is just really an experiment on my part. I didn't didn't spend a lot of time carefully uh, putting it together. Just put some stuff around. And so it might take a few more iterations uh, just on different areas and maybe coming back to this one as the first one I did to make it cooler. Now, uh, where did you go, final tree? Uh, that is not what I wanted to do. And we want you kind of here. That is not in the right spot. That's better. And give it a random spin of the wheel in the world space. And this is can spin around as well. I'll just just let's have a look. So there you go. There's a bunch of stuff, a bunch of trees. And it's kind of all decorated. And I think like the other thing to do is just uh, come around over here kind of compare the two in terms of density of objects. That's pretty good. 
think this could do with let's just move this guy over here a bit and then it's kind of like you know less uh, less all of that the other thing to do is to put the fog back on again So when we go back into here, you kind of get that creeping in. I think I actually had this even closer. Oh, why is that? Okay, that's why. That is really light in comparison with how it used to be. It's a bit better. I need to go look at that. Go change some of the lighting settings in this, and uh, it's going to say Quar. Ah, that's not too bad. And the idea with the fog is just that, like, it gives you better depth perception. But when you're level editing, it kind of gets in the way a bit. And this is supposed to be in the morning, and all of that sort of thing. So, um. But I think what I'll do next is just kind of like lay out this area here a bit as well and see what we can get that looking like. And there's nothing going to be happening here in terms of like the actual game. So it's just a good spot to get to get that kind of, you know, jungly feel going. Um, so what we want to do is find some of these guys. Um, we've got three different kinds, so we'll just grab them, move them over. Whoops, don't want to do that. And so we can talk a bit about how to like structure this sort of thing. So we've got this tall one, leaning one, and uh, the split one, and the tall one's actually. Uh, Let's just come down here. The tall one's actually just scaled on the uh, y-axis uh, by like 2.7. So you can kind of mess around with all these kind of heights of things. And if you look, like 2 is actually, uh, when you get down to it, they're all the same height. And that's because I made this one first, and then this one is that adjusted, and then this one is uh, this one adjusted even more so you can see it's kind of like twists a bit as well as it goes up uh, and it's you know just nice to have like a, a standard height for them all so that I can just play about with them as I like and you can also do that with these kind of scaling tools as well so you can make it super short although you kind of want to stay around like a similar similar height to the way they started off and so what we kind of want is some sort of depth of these, uh, but not too many of them. And I think, uh, where's zoom? Zoom out. And I think uh, we'll start off with this guy. Whoops, but we want to move him and not squish him horribly. It's better. Um, so we'll stick a few of these. I actually want this one kind of here. And uh, another one out in the back. And one more. Here. And then we'll delete that guy. And for this guy. Put one here, one here, one. Uh, let's see, yeah, carry on up into here, one there, and for the street guy, just have one here, have one there, have one here, one here. 
And then we can delete this. And then already you can see that there's a lot more uh, <laughs> trees right now. Um, but you can see the repeating patterns really obviously with the human eye. You can really easily notice that. So we're going to have to break up that a little bit. And the best way of doing that is just to rotate things a little. If we want to make things from a finite number of assets, but we don't want them to look too familiar all the time. I mean, you see this in games all the time, right? Like, I've seen that tree a million times before. And this is kind of why the uh, having a few different kinds is kind of important. Like the straight trees obviously don't have like much potential for looking different. Whoops, for looking different. But that is that this kind of ruins my lead. <laughs> Can bend them, lean them more over. This isn't actually one of the straight trees. Um, so you can have them like, for instance, this one like that. And if we just get a bit closer, so you can see its trunk is kind of poking out of the ground. We can poke it into the ground and it's maybe being over a bit much there. And so we've lost a lot of that kind of Oh, everything is ordered thing. And primarily we did that by making it not ordered. Um, but that also helps. And this is kind of quite dense, I guess, in comparison with that. So maybe we'll just move things around a bit. Uh, or is it, let's just see. Oh, it's not too different to that over there actually. And so I actually want to push this one a little bit over here. This one can kind of go there. I don't want to make them too ordered. Um, yeah, and uh, so, so the next thing you can do, like if you think about the trees as like centerpieces, what are the other kinds of centerpieces you can have? Well, uh, we have this rock that I've been using. Um, so we can have some of these and just plop them in. Uh, let's just do a couple together. Sort of sort them out in a second. And we can have some the looser roundabout place. And this is going to be like suffering exactly the same problem. So these, these are the things that we want to call out, well not call out, but you know, they're in there to be uh, elements, like larger elements. So for example, you have the same problem in that they're all pointing in the same direction. Um, but let's start off with this guy here. And we can make him a bit taller and a bit, whoops, and a bit wider. We can do the same with this. Pull it out longer. Uh, like that. And then just kind of move it about. And then, you know, that's become more of an element in its own right, and you can't see the join between all the objects. I'm still uh, still trying to decide it's interesting, it's got no back to it. Still trying to decide uh, whether I like like differently scaled obvious voxels or not. Like it's a thing obviously with pixel art where people uh, stretch pixels or have different size pixels and people get grumpy about it. And I can see kind of like the why you might, because uh, pixel art is very much about capturing like a retro feel in a way, uh, even if you're doing a very sort of modern kind of game. 
and you know people have moved beyond that to include lighting effects and all of that sort of stuff into pixel art but ultimately you're capturing or to a lot of people you're ca capturing a nostalgic feel and uh, let's see yeah, change the other thing we can do is push some of these into the ground and change the outline a bit that way we can make them bigger Yeah, so like, you know, pixel art is trying to capture that sort of nostalgic feel. Whereas voxel art isn't. Voxel art is very much, you know, this is 3D art. And to me, like the, the fact that the player's voxels, for example, take his head, are smaller than the bush's voxels. Which, and these are just one one objects, similar with this and similar with the flowers are different again to some of these. These are like these trees because they've been stretched or we haven't stretched them yet. Uh, these trees are also, you know, the same resolution as these guys. Um, but what I did is double the resolution, uh, double the size of them. So each of these blocks is actually two things. So I don't think you get the same problems uh, in voxel art that you do with pixel art. It's the long winded way of saying that. And uh, I think that's kind of cool because it gives you more leeway uh, to do stuff. Um, what were we doing? Why is my screen juddering? Because I just stood on something. Um, bum, bum, bum. I need to go through and make sure that a bunch of these things don't have collision turned on, like the flowers at the moment you collide with, which is sort of silly. Uh, and also impact starts impacting our frame rate and this sort of thing because the camera is the camera recasting against these yeah. yeah so now we have like these things in uh, and the trees and all of that sort of stuff we can start to use them as like an anchor point to put these other smaller elements around and the grass is kind of already there and it's kind of haphazardly scattered which is okay for now um i think like what we'll do in the meantime, just before we get going, is stretch all of these a little bit differently. So the ones further in are going to be taller, and the ones further out are going to be shorter. That's my uh, my working theory just now. This one can be tall because it's next to some rocks. We don't have to change all of them, but just getting like some slightly different heights. You can see here that now everything is slightly, slightly different. And also then like the canopy when you view when it's viewed from afar or viewed from above, you'll see like a curve to it as well, uh, which would be nice. But yeah, so what I was saying is that we have. We have these objects and they're not really hero objects, you know, the focus of the scene, they're just decoration. But in terms of like, you know, what's going on in that scene, uh, probably where you want to put uh, detail around. So for example, this rock here has two little baby rocks next to it, which are just the same rocks. It's the plant and that sort of side of things. We also have the bushes. Um, so we want to kind of like do some of that sort of stuff. And I think you know, I'm not actually editing. I think one of the first things to do is maybe just whoa, not scale grass. Uh, just put some grass around these. You kind of get that uh, effect with movie to audit. Am I just lining them all up again? And then we can find one of. So these flowers, for example, 
I'm going to turn that collision off. So Melody's copying and pasting the right stuff. And can you do this just now? No. So when you're pulling them out and placing them from uh, the voxel resource, then you can rotate them using the mouse wheel, which is kind of cool. But I can't do that just now. So you can put these in like this, and maybe just put some more around the back here. Whoops. Give me the green wheel. And the idea is just that, like, you know, these things are growing up where there's a bit of shade and a bit of shelter. You can kind of see already that it's a bit more exciting, just even in this little corner. Um, and then we want to think about all the tree, tree trunks and everything else in that sort of respect as well. So, what I'll do is just copy and paste these nearby. Uh, actually, what we'll do, we'll just sling some of these around about the place. Then we can go and fiddle about with them later. Kind of dishing them out at the moment. I don't want everyone to have one. You can have like a little clump of them in the middle by themselves. Uh, yes. Do, do, do. I might just put that one inside. Yeah, and so the other thing is not to be too precious about how these things work. Take the ability to put push them inside of stuff and change how this it lets you break up these like obvious patterns as well. And so like the story that I'm making, let's talk about that whilst I'm just fiddling about with these things. Uh, so the story, uh, right now it's kind of, I don't know, I feel like I'm channeling uh, Monkey Island a bit, if you've played that, but kind of quintessential uh, point and click adventure game. Whoops. Let's just shove you in the ground. And uh, you've landed on this uh, island with your pirates. And you've visited the locals to stock up on supplies and visited uh, the local bar. And you've woken up with a hangover on your ship, but your crew hasn't. And it'll turn out when you come onto the island that your crew uh, wrecked the bar and is in jail. And to get them out, you need to get the crystal skull from the, the temple that nobody's visited up here. And there'll be a bunch of other stuff that relates to how you get there. So uh, the mechanism for the lift just here will be broken. And uh, you'll need to get that. But to get that, you'll need to get a key from a well. To get the key from the well, you need to do a bunch of other stuff. And to get the actual uh, like lever you're missing, you'll need to find that as well. A disgruntled bird wants some ice cream and just all of that sort of 
fun thing. And I need to flesh out like in the pirate ship as well. Like it, that's gonna need to have some stuff in it. And we'll just get some of this forest done. And it'll all be cool. Uh, if anybody has some cool ideas for like things to add in, funny jokes. Like mostly, I don't want to rip off kind of like the humor of Monkey Island, I guess. And I don't know that I'm even that funny. Funny looking, maybe, as the saying goes. Let's just stick some more of these in. Alright, you can see that's kind of like, you know, added a bunch of colour and breaks up the ground a bit. And again, like once you're in this sort of view, you don't really notice all the repetition. And so the next thing to do is bushes. Slightly bigger kind of ground pieces. And stick. Definitely want something like up here. Want to make sure that it looks all right from the uh, from the ship as well. So this is not just a uh, how is this part? You know, how do, how does it look from the path? Which is obviously where you'll see things closer. So if you like run all the way back over to the ship to take a quick look at everything, it's hard to tell what it would be like. Quah. But you have like this view of the island and already adding these uh, trunks in is pretty cool from the perspective of just adding uh, stuff to break up these uh, very orange bits of pieces. Actually, you know, I think they work quite nicely. They kind of give separation from the gray up here. And uh, once that's got greenery on it, then it's going to be even better. I wonder if we can put some like mid height plants in to uh, to do something about that. The other thing I'm thinking about doing is some like jungle vines. Hang on a second, what's this up here? There's grass hanging out happily in the middle of the air. I don't know where you came from, but I don't like you. And uh, so. Just carry on putting these. These are bushes without berries on. Um, and we'll put some bushes with berries on in a minute. We'll do that now, I think. And again, they're all being lined up like they're. Uh, whoops, we pasted this guy down here. Being lined up a little bit too much in terms of, you know. Uh, did not want to paste there. In terms of like their orientation, but we'll sort that out in a second. I keep pasting the original one. Uh, so we just like stick these in amongst one another to kind of push out around here. Respect the ground. Uh, let's delete that one. Cool. And then with these very square things, 
tweaks tweaks are what's needed because you can just 90 degrees and 180 degrees is obviously just the same so you can only really push them a tiny amount without getting back to the same alignment issue you had before although that said these aren't uh, symmetrical all the way around these should fit the thing they're plunged into so we kind of like you know have these either side but with their sides pointing towards the center of the rock you can see how these your eye just notices that, this, that these are marching in the same direction as one another You can point your edge uh, and just twig. Right, did I get them all? I think so. So, whoops, I really need a sprint button. Poor. Yeah, so you can see like already the ground is starting to look a lot better. How are we doing? There's a loon thing just off down there. Maybe that's not so good. Let's just get rid of you for now. I don't like it. Um, I won't put everybody through making palm tree fronds, or will I? But, so we'll just stick some of these in. And the neat thing about these is they kind of like, quite good to sit, sit in hollows. I like putting them in this sort of spot. I have a bunch of them just by themselves, though. Maybe I might just have one there. I have a bunch of them by themselves over here. I think I've made, let's get some of these flowers over there as well. Like, yeah, want to avoid just leaving areas that you don't think people will go and look at bare. Because obviously when they do go and look at it, then they're like, ah, lazy level designers not finishing anything off. Right. Here we are. Let's get in and tweak them in context. It's a good example of why all of this stuff takes so long to do. Let's move you out. I think what I'll do next stream is try and make sure that we're doing something a bit more like interesting, get some of the feature pieces made maybe. Is okay. Yeah, zoom out. 
uh, start working on what the temple looks like, the other inside bit. Maybe we can do that just in a second. Um, bom, bom, bom. Cool. I actually want to do the palm tree leaves as well, just so just so I get a, a look at what the final thing is like as well. Let's save our progress so far. Uh, yeah, you can go check it out, run around in it, and tell me what you think as well. Oh, no, that link won't work. Uh, there's this earlier one. Whoops. Why is my caps up? And that should be the latest that we've got up to just now. Uh, let's just get in on this guy. Right, control C. And bum bum bum. Fill it up. And ah, uh, I took the top off that one. Uh, let's go back. I don't disagree with what I've done before. I think I will. Leave that other bit alone for just now. Uh, control C, Control V. Is quickly placing these around. He's really not onto the right palm tree. There we go. Nearly done. Just rotate you. Let's 
really match the angle. Move this guy and try and rotate him back without destroying the world. Interesting when I paste that, the rotation changes. Did I get that right first time? Amazing. I do not know what's happening with the copy and paste there. Because it did copy and paste it pretty exactly. I'm also moving it in local space, which is not ideal. I think that's them all. Cool. And <laughs> you can definitely see the issue with them all facing in the same direction there. Like how uh, you can see really clearly that they all have the same like facing direction. Maybe it's just me, but I find that really distracting. And really get the sense of moving into open space when you run into here now as well, which is very cool. Now let's go see what it looks like from the ship. Cool. Yeah, so here we go. Oh, Nightbot has advertised Discord for us. So you can see already it looks a lot more island like. Than it did before we started. And it only took us 45 minutes maybe to put all that stuff out there. Uh, save it. And all that sort of stuff. Uh, so the next thing, now that we've done that a bit, is I think maybe that's cool. Come back up over here and come back into this section. So I'd really like I'd thought about this section here and what I would like to have. Uh, at least in these bits and pieces is like you know the traditional uh, doors you have to like time getting through and all of that sort of thing um, I did just make a big kind of like area here uh, but I think that that's probably uh, not gonna be great or at least you get there too quickly, right? You just do this quick bit of jumping and then you're there. It doesn't set any tone or atmosphere. You can't have lots of dead skeletons lying around and that sort of thing. So uh, it would be good to basically go and add in uh, more interest for the player as they're coming through. Where did I go? If anybody's got any questions or wants to know what I'm doing or what I'm using, uh, feel free to ask. Or anything at all. Dropping the character in. Yeah, so over here it's just grey boxed. So you may have heard that term a lot before, but this is l very literally grey boxed in that all of these are grey boxes. Uh, this is literally a one by one by one voxel that I've scaled to this size and the whole of this area with the exception of this and this uh, are made from these and I'm just doing it so I can get like so I can make the level and play it and get some idea of what it feels like to be in that space and how big that space is 
Um, and what I decided, let's make, let's just copy this, bring it through. And this is a super quick way of working because I can just go like that. And suddenly I have most of a floor put in. Whoops, that was not what I wanted to do. Uh, yeah, I don't want to scale it, so I want to move it. That's why, and I do not want to move it like that. When you're working with this architectural kind of stuff, suddenly these like cardinal axes and doing it in local scale with the object make a lot more sense. Uh, wait a second, am I poking out? Nips. Yeah, so now we'll go back to our user and woo, we are, this is quite low. So the good thing is that because this is on this side, I'm going to turn the fog back off again quickly. Yeah, so the good thing, whoops. The good thing, because we're no longer in the same area, there's no longer necessarily an expectation to have floor height be the same. And I'm going to get us up a bit. Let's go up a floor. Nope. Come on. You can do it. Ugh. Um, get rid of these. So we have this entity browser as well. Cool. So we're running around, excellent. You can kind of see that the walls probably need to be higher if we're going to raise the floor much more. I think, anyway, but we'll see. It should be easy to do. Oops. Uh, we're going to replace these later as we go. So this can be kind of rough just now. Yeah, anyway, where's that one? Cool. We have a slightly higher room. And if we grab ourselves and push ourselves back through the floor. Yeah. Like so one of the one of the things that I'm thinking about just now is we have this third person camera and actually he's sitting quite far back. Um we can go and play with that actually as well. It's actually on the camera. And there's all these sorts of uh, sorts of ideas of like what's the max distance it can be away. So if we put it in closer, maybe that's better. Yeah. And we get like a sense of how high up everything is and all of that sort of thing. And we can set the minimum pitch and the maximum pitch. So maybe we don't want you to go so far down or so far up. And yeah, how we just translate the uh, control motion. These two things um, just offsets for where we're at. So we can push this, like if I push this up high and we're like miles above the player. If we push it to 60, that's maybe more sensible. Where have you gone? Yeah, so you can see like he's pushed down the screen. Uh, the value of 30 was a good one. That's kind of at shoulder height, basically. And these are in voxel units. Uh, field of view, so we can push the field of view out. And get this sort of effect. And that's actually changing. And field of views, zoom essentially, but we want quite a tight field of view. I think this default is pretty good. 
The other question I have is whether this is half, so you can do the field of view as in like the whole horizontal arc or half the horizontal arc. I don't know which one this is set up as. I think it's set up as half the horizontal arc. Actually, that that's actually better. I like being pushed in close. But again, like then the name's too big and getting in the way and all of that sort of thing. So, you know, we can play about with that. So 60, 60 times 60 is 120. So that's the, the arc that we're dealing with, I think, there, which is why when you go to 90, everything looks super fisheye. Uh, it's gone too far. Uh, <laughs> it's now starting to get hard to see what's going on. But we're basically, the user comes in here and they come into this area and you can kind of see like the shadow range is kind of short and messed up just now. Um, so what we want to do, I think what would be cool along here is to have kind of the idea of jail cells or some sort of like dungeon themed bits and pieces. And um, maybe there's some like interesting things you can find and pick up in there. And the good news is I was found just the other day this grating. Um, and maybe it's wrong for this, but maybe it's not. It's not too bad. Well, I'm going to have to make it bigger. So maybe it is wrong for this. Because if I scale this, it scales the holes as well. Yeah, actually, yeah, it should work. And again, this is just temporary. And for people that are watching uh, the, like the platform I'm using, Dot Big Bang, you can go, just go onto the website here and, uh, and find this iron grate yourselves. I'll just show it quickly. There's a bunch of stuff people have made. If you go on the latest tab, you can see what I'm working on just now, but also what other people are working on, including a game I'm working, and I'll be streaming the programming side of making this twin stick shooter uh, tomorrow. It's got turkeys in it, which is kind of cool. Um, what else? Yeah, finding this gate so you can find all of the uh, different kind of gato. You can find all of the objects that other people have made and you can bring them into your own uh, world. And just on the front page, you can log in, join our Discord, uh, chat to a few people. You can make a world, you can make an object uh, and start doing this sort of same level design uh, stuff that I'm doing. Right now, scripting isn't accessible to everybody and some of the actual uh, some of this stuff is harder to do if you're used to a certain way of working uh, than it is in this editor. Like this is a very like, you know, if you've used Unity or Unreal or anything like that, you'd be very familiar with this editor. Uh, but one of the things we're trying to do is make editing approachable, both code, what am I doing? I've grabbed the wrong thing. Uh, yeah, just trying to make everything approachable in terms of how you go about uh, building this sort of thing. There it is. Let's find our player again. Uh, yeah, just to make all of this approachable and easy to use so you don't need to be like an expert in uh, making games or anything to be successful. We're all kind of veteran game devs. I've been making video games for like 15 years now, which feels ridiculous. Just adjusted the yaw. I know this is a five degree yaw. I'm going to test out filling this gap with this. Ah, there we go and start scaling it out. So we just need to go a bit bigger. And it's not perfect. Yeah, it's still bigger still. 
It's not perfect. But I think that looks all right from the perspective of hoo hoo. I need to make that a bit wider though. Uh, now we've got so big and chunky. How's that? Yeah. I mean, I could be good with thinner bars, I think, is, <laughs> is the bottom line there. Like, we had to stretch it this way a lot, and it's a gate, uh, which is not ideal. But just to give some sort of idea, uh, let's get in here. And sooner rather than later, I'm going to have to start thinking about. And I can just what paste it, paste it. How many of these can I get in? What am I grabbing? I can get in a couple more. Yeah, and so like you know, eventually you'll be able to run in and make these yourself, and uh, all of that sort of stuff. And uh, these are all really not very well aligned. Let's give you some more room in your cell. Maybe we can put some beds in there as well. Need shackles. And it's kind of good that we're building an ancient temple because you might expect these to be kind of wonkily sized anyway. All right, we need to do, we need to swing them round by 90 and pull them forwards. Not too far forward because they need to obviously overlap. And I think what we'll do for now is just see how this feels at this sort of size. So this one is like massive, this one is tiny. There's going to need to be a lot of detail, well not a lot of detail, but quite some detail in here just to get these, uh, just to make things visible because the shadowing and the lighting it's clearly set up for the outside. It's good learning experience for making engine adjustments. I'll give that one some more room. Push the thing into the opposite wall. You can see this one, yeah. We're in trouble. Let's go this way. How big is that doorway? It's pretty good size, so let's use that as an approximate size that we want. Let's see, let's move you this way. I think we'll only end up with three of these cells. And then we can put something else here. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. This one's bigger, but I kind of like that it's bigger. 
Uh, so grab these two pieces and make another unit. Grab these two pieces, make them as a unit. This is just a singular bit. So that one's still nice and chunky. This one's nice and chunky, and this one's chunkier. Nice and chunky, nice and chunky, is nice and chunky. Yeah, and then we have like this area. I think I'll get rid of this one as well to make, I don't know, like guard station, a torture chamber, kind of like flitting now a little bit between it being an underground temple or you know this is could be where people were prepared for their sacrifices or I don't know what whatever cliches we want to add in um, that is very cliched though Ooh, whoops let's not take the stairs away and then we'll just do this like make it a little bit more maze like and go inside uh, come back this way, me. So I can also control the character at the same time. This is like live in the game. Uh, it's fairly, fairly wide. Fairly wide, he said. Not wide enough. That's better. Again, it's just, you know, making sure that it doesn't feel too claustrophobic for the player to be in that space because the camera is different. Like a lot of the time you'd think game environments are just like architecture and they kind of are, but you're dealing with a totally different set of concepts and constraints. Do I want to force maybe the way out is level pull back a bit. Yeah, so that's the third one. Yeah, and so like you've got all the ideas from architecture in terms of space and using it and utilizing it and thinking about how people will inhabit it. But you also need to think about it specifically from the perspective of video games and what will what their needs are and the need in this ca particular case is that the camera is you know nearly as much above the player as uh, again as the player is tall so not like the eyes of the player with the eyes of the camera and if I had the roof at a standard roof height like two meters thirty or so uh, the camera would be on that roof and bouncing along it and you'd have half your screen would be roof as opposed to like, you know, we don't really care about the roof when we're playing video games so so much. We care about seeing what's on it in terms of decoration. And we care about, uh, you know, things falling from it. So we want to see some of it, but we don't care that much about it. Ooh, we should make this. This is, this is kind of cool. I still think the temple would be better on the floor above. So we've got quite a bit to go in terms of uh, space. I think we can just grab this and duplicate it across again. Where am I looking? I have done the wrong thing. Let's just make sure that that's back. Yep. Do you want to paste it before I move it over? And I think in here is where we'll have some of the 
like just cliched you're in a temple what the heck's going on kind of stuff like uh thinking about uh things like you know axes swinging side to side blow dart guns shooting through the wall just things like that and we're actually kind of almost making this like final temple area into a thing by doing this now it might actually be fine as it is in which case all of my so again like this shouldn't drag right like I'm just thinking about the pacing of exploring this and finding jumps and all of that sort of stuff There we go. So you kind of come in and you find this like scary area or maybe there's blood on the floor or whatever. And then you, or maybe it's just lighthearted. Maybe there's something interesting. And then, you know, you have this slight like bit you don't want to go down. And then you come round into the sacrifice area, which is where the skull and everything is going to be. And let's, I think, we need to get in and rearrange, maybe even slim down some of these pillars. Why are we multi selecting? Uh, maybe even slim down some of these pillars, but certainly move them in a bit. This is going to be, can we do it from above? Yes. So these definitely need to be pulled back. You can kind of get that now that they're too thick. Right, slim them down. Now, one of the sort of nice things that you can do is grab. We do not want you ground. We've selected too much stuff. Yeah, so we select them all, and they're like 30 by 30. So let's do half. And on the Z axis as well, half. Okay, now they're more sensibly sized for this sort of indoor space. And since this is supposed to be a sacrificial thing, let's just get back underground. Let's move that more into the center or even towards the front. If you imagine this is gonna be where some hapless soul is strapped to the table <laughs> and maybe maybe that's what the skeleton is he is the crystal skull and you can't uh, can't you need to free him or something along those lines and then so like this whole area inside of here is where you hang out and uh, meet him and we can decorate it with like torches and bones lying on the ground and get some actual details on the walls make these pillars into something more interesting to look at and just that sort of stuff uh, let's just go save everything I think I've got this set up so you can uh, remix it as a work in progress. And if we zoom out and we zoom back in again. Uh, so kind of want to close off this part of the roof. So let's just do that.
and then it looks kind of you can see that this is taking shape now in terms of see what we can make our thumbnail look like so this is the thumbnail for the game essentially so we can go back into here we can uh, well, after I saved it uh, we can see it on here not searching for gates there you go it has all of our new trees and all that sort of stuff in there um, I think the next thing to do is maybe design a pillar so let's do that and just to be just to show you stuff coming down the pipe do it in uh, the admin mode voxel object editor so if you use magic of voxel this is voxel objects editing in a similar vein whoops drawing them across the world uh, this voxel guy is good to show us how big voxels are I want to I want to delete you why would you not let me delete you there you go um, and then so what we can do we can add in objects filled box ellipsoids uh, just a, the shape of the outside of a box add individual voxels remove them uh, push faces in and out which is one of the features that isn't in the voxel editor but is very useful and will probably be super useful for what we're about to do um, so for example you could say we want one two three four five or four one two three four five one two three four five <laughs> turn mirroring on one two three four five six do that so this is the start the base of our pillar and then we can come in a bit and do that so pillar that was quite easy but it's not square which is annoying this is where we can use the push face in, push it in on that side, push it in on that side, probably need to do one more. That is square. We're definitely in the wrong color as well, and we want to be taller, I think. And you can see each one of these is one voxel at the moment, which is actually okay, I think, for for this, so we'll stick in it. But we might want to add some more like detail down here, or maybe we'll just do that with color. Um, Push the whoops, I don't want to add, I want to push. So we'll do that and we'll just save it as temple pillar. In this case, it's published, other people can use it and it can be remixed. That means somebody else can come in and change this and make their own version of it. And make a thumbnail for us. And then we'll just save our changes. And in here, if we go back to our player, you can see our pillars. And we can get out resources, voxel object, temple pillar. And now we can see how big it is. So the standard voxel size makes everything this big. which is quite small. And so how much do we need to scale it by? What happens if we doubled it, the size of everything? It would be more like it. That's good, because that's what I want to do in the end, but it needs to come up quite a bit more. It's interesting that. Hard to tell how big something is 
just in this voxel object editor. If anybody's got any questions or any comments or just wants whoops topic of conversation to chat about whilst we're building this. It'd be cool to hear from you. If you like what you've seen, if you hit follow, then you'll find out when I'm doing this again. Basically doing level design on Mondays and then uh, game design and gameplay programming on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. And I'll mix that up uh, when I'm making different things. So right now I'm making this short narrative game. And then in the future, ooh, we don't want the green guy, thank you. We want the temple pillar. We can have a dapper pup pin for now. Okay, yeah, so we need to need to reload to get that pillar back in again, um, which I won't do now. I'll just carry on building it. And then the next thing I do is make it twice as uh, twice as big. And that's basically just double the size, which increases the resolution. And that means we can do more kind of like interesting and intricate drawing on it. Um, and now we also uh, want to start making pillar a different color. Let's kind of get some purple in there so it looks kind of scary. It is too light. To be grayer. That's better. And then we can paint. And if we go up to like green, can we just keep the hue the same? Keep the change the hue, but keep everything else the same. Sort of. And that is really. Uh, faint. So I'd like to go more green. That's better. So this is like a moss kind of like idea. Probably don't want to be mirroring this. Uh, And we can just kind of like sparkle this in. Come back and change it later to your heart's content. Suddenly getting so far away. Just an example. Someone gets updated. Spin GIF. And then we can try it out in situ, which does mean I'm going to have to reload this. So, one of the things that would be nice in the future is when those things can just be pulled live. But I think we cache something somewhere, which means that's not possible. So I put a roof on it. It's kind of irritating. Actually, oh, it's got two roofs on it, so it doesn't make much difference. All right. Well, there's 15 minutes left, so I'll just show you this. Uh, let's play for me. Where is the player? Right back at the start. What on earth did I move all the way over there? Oh no, a spawn point. Right, grab the actual player, pause the game, 
move them across to use one of these. All right. <laughs> and this. And grab something that isn't a flare. Very interesting how sensitive the grabbing is. Right. Cool. So we do some jumping and that'll get filled in with more detail. Won't be floating platforms, there'll be actual like junk and reasons why this is hanging down. And maybe an ice cream van. Come in here, you've got the jails. Go through here, you have this choice, but you really want to go this way. And then you come into this room here, and then that's where we're gonna hit edit. And then go to our resources, temple pillar, and it's kind of the right size now. Oh, almost exactly the right size, which is neat. That's kind of accidental, but just to show you how this will work out. These two can go on top of one another. We can select this and we can delete it. And then we can, you know, fill the temple space up with these. And just rotate them around, as you saw with the trees. And obviously this needs to be a little bit more flamboyant in terms of what it looks like. But it's doing a pretty good job. These are really not very well lined up. I bet you I haven't rotated this by five as well. Which is why these are really not very well lined up. You do it in local space. That's better. And I need to make this one. So I have no idea why I built these off uh, off axis. It's just what happened. Feels like a lot of effort to go through and change all of these things around. And we'll just push these through. Right. And now we can just say like, okay, let's rotate this one by 90. Uh, rotate this one by 180. Ah, uh, they're not centered. Let's not do that. So they can be 90 and they can be, wow, 90 screwed up as well. Who knows? Uh, no, seems okay. So we could do minus 90, minus 904, minus 90. And we want to do actually minus 85 to keep the things matching. And this one can be 90. There you go. 
have fillers in our temple. Could maybe even have some more going across the middle here. Maybe two more. Does that check out dots? So I want to push them in a bit so there's a wider gap in the middle. Imagine like you know you have a procession from the prisoner thing, comes around here with people doing whatever, and then we come in, get brutally murdered right there. Uh, hold on a sec. Okay, we've got ten minutes. Um, let's talk about next steps for for this level uh, by going back into the edit mode and looking outside. So the main things the main things left to do are to detail. Uh, probably what I'll do off stream during this week is detailing out more of the trees, I need to make these trees not identical, uh, more of the trees into this area and starting work on, you know, kind of what the village uh, will look like and probably uh, more on elements that are in here and maybe detailing a bit up around here. I also need to think about what I'm going to put on these things and around here. And then uh, start adding in uh, some people to do, other people to talk to, and the actual gameplay side of things, which might make for slightly more interesting streams rather than me making a million palm trees. But things are looking kind of cool. Like it's amazing to think that just two weeks ago. I started with a pirate ship, and when I say two weeks ago, I mean I've done about four hours work in total to get to here. Uh, I literally made the pirate ship in this bit, and this these were just these two, the same thing, copied twice. Uh, we obviously have a way to go in terms of like creating all of these shacks and buildings, but maybe I'll make one of those on stream next week as well. That might be fairly fun. I uh, just need to think about what that's going to look like. Um, and then we need to get onto the temple itself and designing what the temple will look like and making all those bits. And hopefully I can convince Voxelius, who's the artist working on this project, like the the Dot Big Bang platform, uh, to chip in with some of this stuff because he's a lot quicker at it than I am and ends up with a lot prettier things. Like I think for the temple, this this set of steps should be <coughs> part of the inspiration. Uh, but tomorrow I'm going to be streaming gameplay, as I said, uh, which will be uh, this game that we can go check out just now. Let's go back. Uh, Project Twinstick which is, as the name might suggest to you, a twin stick shooter. Uh, currently we've got basic shooting working. Uh, we have spawn points for turkeys. The turkeys chase after you. And right now they attack you. And we're just working on the logic for all of this sort of stuff going. It's a bit of a turkey mosh bit at the moment. So the next things we'll be working on are uh, the, uh, the attack logic again for the turkeys so that they have a bit of a like right now they go between their sort of flocking and attacking states but they need to go into a dazed state and uh, so they don't just like repeatedly kill you and you 
can shoot and kill them, then they'll be able to kill you. Uh, you can destroy their farms, which stops them from spawning. And we're going to go through, I've got a Trello, uh, we'll go through that some more as well. But just giving you a bit of a look into what I'll be talking about tomorrow. Uh, more turkey shooting action on the way to making this its kind of like first properly playable version. Um, so that's great. Thanks for watching. If you could hit the follow button, that would be amazing. Uh, likewise, the links to both Twitter and Discord are in chat. Uh, join our Discord. It's the Discord for Dot Big Bang. Uh, not for me personally, and it's you know full of people that are making cool stuff on the platform. Uh, my Twitter account has me talking about game development stuff, but also stream uh, information. So if I'm not streaming, I'll write about it there. Um, and that's about it. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m.